Welcome, fans, to another live edition of the Cheap Heat Productions Pro Wrestling Podcast and also the January Dry edition of the Mario Mancini Show. Mario Mancini Show. My name is Jack Kilby, Executive Vice President of Great North Wrestling. And, of course, we are joined by uh, the, the ubiquitous Mario Mancini. But before we get to him, I'm going to throw to Maurice, Mr. Cheap Heat, to discuss the huge breaking news that we have tonight. Yes, this is just straight off the press, and I'm sure it's going to be in all the news stories tomorrow, that June 29th in Napanee, Ontario, Canada, Mario Mancini is coming out of retirement. For Great North Wrestling, an exclusive your thoughts, eight, sir. Eight days. Eight days after my 58th birthday. Eight days after my 58th birthday. I don't, you know, it's, I, I, I don't know. It, it, how can I compare this? It's like, uh, I don't know, trying to, uh, trying to have popcorn kernels pop in a popcorn machine that only heats up to, uh, you know, 40 degrees. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting show. Uh, in all seriousness, I, I, I'm going to uh, rely on my, my, um, my psychology skills to get through a, a wrestling match. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll just um, mimic... Uh, a la Chief J. Strongbow, my second father, and um, I'm sure I'll be fine because the Chief has taught me many things, uh, not only about wrestling, but about life, but uh, a lot of wrestling and a lot of psychology, so I'm sure I'll be able to get through it, no problem. Um, I am planning on bringing Nikki Duke, hopefully. She's suffered some injuries, but I'm looking to bring Nikki with us, and I, I, I sent her a message. She's healing, and I said, you know, uh focus the goal is june 29th i'd like to i'd like to put her put her bring her bring her there and um hot off the press here um which uh, you know i think it's only fair that i warn the canadian people um that brad baylor's coming to canada and i can't even fathom those poor people you know, this kid isn't even 20 years old and I, what comes out of his mouth, I can't control, but it's, it's, uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to get offended. Here's the problem though. The kid can back it up with his wrestling skills. So th that, that'll make him hate him even more. You know what I mean? So, you know, every time I see the kid work, I want to call him the natural, but that was already taken. Um, so it, it's just like, um, you know, if, if you see, a. uh, uh, you know, a, a, a guy that's, you know, six foot two and he's got broad shoulders and, and uh, a 28 inch waist. What, what do you say? You say, well, that guy probably makes a pretty good bodybuilder, right? So it, this kid is just built for professional wrestling. He's just got it. He's got the it factor. You know what I mean? That not a lot of people have. Um you know, out, outside of the wrestling business, he, he comes from, um, you know, a, a, gr a great family, a great mom and dad. Uh, and yeah, in 2024, yeah, the mom and dad are together. So they, he comes from a great family. He's a, he's a, a, a very, uh, a very nice, respectful young man. However, um, you know, the, the thing is, is it, behind closed doors, you know, he is who he is, but outside of those closed doors, did, nobody's going to get him to break his character. So nobody's going to think this is a really good humble kid. <laughs> Nobody, because he won't break his character. He he he, he won't do that. And um, I I think Jack, you're going to be very pleased with him, extremely pleased. And I think you're going to want him back. And I hope you do want him back because he will go back. Um. You know, he's he wants to wrestle anywhere he could possibly work. You know, I'll I'll tap in the holiday if your budget allows it. I'll tap in the holiday and see if he if he wants to uh if he wants to go. Um, 
but Nikki, I'm I'm concerned about Nikki. Like I'm worried sick, and I know she says I hate when people say that. It's just it. You know, I know she's strong enough to get through it. I just want to make sure she, you know she's going to be okay. You know, um, pretty serious injury. So, um, hopefully she'll be okay and she'll be able to come. And, and you got you got Roma. I I I I pretty sure you got Roma. Um, you know, I think Scott Wilder wants to, <laughs> to jump in a car. <laughs> Look, he's already he's already commenting. Where's my money? Where's my money? Scott wants to jump in a car. Scott, plus your big cash cow now. Listen, Scott, you better plug Maryland because uh, on February fourth, because I forgot the town. You better you better plug Maryland. <laughs> my, <laughs> I got to give him a cut. I got to give Scott a cut of everything I make. I'm surprised I'm not sending him a cut for my paycheck for my day job. Um, so, uh, yeah. Shout out, though. A shout out to um, Joe Molinari. Shout out to him. Or I think it's Molinaro. Molinaro. Joe Molinaro. Listen, anybody who says they're eating dinner and listen to my podcast gets a shout out. Because he could say, listen, I was eating dinner, I was listening to your podcast, but I shut it off and put on the TV instead. So, Joe Molinaro, thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, I, I listen, I want this to be a fun trip. Um, you know, if if Roma can, I, I know we'll work something out with Roma, but I want it to be a fun trip. If Holiday can come, that'd be great. Um you know, Baylor's definitely in. I booked him. I booked him today through his agent. So, uh, MCW Jopa, Jopa, Maryland. Um, Roma and I will be there on the fourth of February with with Scott Wilder. With Scott Wilder. <laughs> are you we'll signing? Are you signing eight by tens there, Mario? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jimmy, uh, mouth of the south. Jimmy Hart will be there. Uh, no, I mean right now. No, no, I'm just doodling, man. I'm just, I'm just doodling. It's, it, listen, it's been a very busy December and and January. Um, I've 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 gone through some stuff that I, I if I had my way, I would have never went through. But um, there's Andy my Hogan. brother there. There's my there's my brother Hogan. And uh, um, you, it, listen, Randy, I saw a clip. You can find it on TikTok where Hogan was pulling up somewhere and there was a Hogan impersonator brother couldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole. Exactly. Could not touch you with a 10 foot pole. He, he couldn't touch you. Um, Here's a so, comment Mario, from Greg C as Brad's father agent. I can tell you he is excited to show the Canadian people what a real wrestler looks like. And being a heel myself, I can appreciate that. So very excited. Yeah, well, that, that's the that's the agent I booked him through. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like I mean, a listen, li, a li, a li, a listen, listen. This kid gets heat. I mean, he gets heat, heat. So uh, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. Um, you know, and think if, uh, I'm glad you told me the date so I can, I can, you know, book it, uh, you know, ahead of time. So the date's open. So, um, wait, you know, let me, let me tell you something that's, that's really, really cool. Really cool. So, so a couple of years ago, a few years ago, Greg comes to the wrestling school, wants to be a wrestler. And obviously his father's got the same name, Craig. So his father comes with him. Right. And he's kind of freaked out and i'm like you know because you guys know me you know um well i'll say it again i'm the low, lowest form on the wrestling food chain who cares you know what i mean um and he just was mesmerized by roma and i and i'm like what well, I, don't, I don't i don't get it so now he looks at me and he goes when i was a kid i lived in poughkeepsie and i went to every single tv taping so greg's father saw me against savage he saw me against bundy he saw me against everyone i wrestled in poughkeepsie and roma too 
So now, years later, his son wants to be a pro wrestler, and there's dad now, 50 years old, and looking at looking at two guys he used to watch when, you know, he was four, 13, 14 years old. It was, it was really, it, it was awesome. It was, it was really, it was awesome. I didn't know he never missed the TV taping in Poughkeepsie. It, Cause that's where I think for, from 84 to 86, if I'm right, we just taped in Poughkeepsie. And I think it was 86 where Vince decided he wanted to take the TV taping on the road. So, um, so it, that was it, that was pretty cool, you know. That was that was pretty cool. That um, you know, there there he is, you know. Obviously, he you know he introduced his when his son became old enough to understand. He introduced him to pro wrestling because he was such a fan. And then years later, his his son becomes a pro, not only a pro wrestler but somebody with 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 a, this kid's got a huge future, huge huge. Uh, he's already been down at developmental. <laughs> he's already been down there, <laughs> so they're keeping an eye on him. They're 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 getting to groom him at, at a very young age, which is which is great. You know what I mean? I, I I hope he doesn't sustain any major injuries, and at the same time, he can you know put away maybe ten or fifteen million dollars in his lifetime and, and and live a good life. You know what I mean? The I live the dream that I, I never lived. You know what I mean? That that's that's my biggest my biggest reward living vicariously through these, these students, if they can make it, I'll, I'll feel like I made it, you know what I mean? Um, so, because I, ne I never did, you know, I, I just didn't make it. Um, I remember walking out of Huntsville, Alabama in 1992, my last match against Rick Rude. And, you know, the next day I got on a plane to go home and, and I can remember buckling myself up in in the, in the seat. I remember this and kind of looking out the window at a window seat, and I went, "Well, that 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 didn't go exactly the way I thought it was going to go." <laughs> so, um, you know, any any time my 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 students, my I call them my family, could could really um, accelerate in the business. It makes me it makes me really happy, you know. Well, well, this Mario. is the this is the exciting part about. Sorry to cut you off, Maurice. I'll just make a brief statement. This is the exciting part about the new era of Great North Wrestling, uh, which we celebrated a 15th anniversary last May in a big show in Ottawa. And moving forward, we're we're trying to uh, give opportunities to those young talents that that really deserve an opportunity. And I point to our Canadian champion, Magna McLaren, right now, who won the belt in July in Smith Falls. And not only that, but balance the bringing in the veteran favorites, et cetera, et cetera, but also provide that platform for uh, independent workers to get experience. Of course, it's on YouTube, so there's a hard cam. There, there's all those skills that, that they need to hone their craft outside of the dojo and knowing your operation and Mr. Roma's operation, we're very excited to be establishing this, this working relationship. Yeah, Jack, it, you know, it's, it's no secret Maurice. I, I when I told Jack that it's going to be eight days after my 58th birthday, I said, but you know what, Jack, I love you. So I'll do it. And you know what? God gave me a gift. This is why I've had the 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 uh, drama I've been having, I had a gut feeling when it's at, at its inception that it was going to be a problem, and I just prayed that it wouldn't be, and it ended up being one. That gut feeling. So you know, Jack is Jack reminds me of um, the old school guys. I think that's why I have you know this gut feeling for him, like like that Jack Tunney and that Arnold Skolan, You know what I mean? I get that feeling from him, so that brings my respect level way up, way way. Like I'll do anything for him. So I I I, 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 I pre I appreciate that, and and uh, you know especially about the people in my school, and you know having Roma at the helm, uh, of of teaching, um. You know, he'll look at somebody in that school and go, listen, listen, Canada's coming up. I'm, I won't send you. I won't send you to Jack unless I know you're going to bring it. You know what I mean? So I, the only thing I can I can hope for with this 
as a guy like like Baylor could could however how often you run shows he becomes a staple for you he gets more experience out there maybe he gets booked more in Canada I mean this is a kid right right is it's a great position to be in this is a kid he has no responsibilities he doesn't have a wife he doesn't have any kids he doesn't have a mortgage he doesn't have a so he can travel the world and give this a shot you know what i mean a true shot and he's got great support from the extremely loving family so um just his is his mother and father I, I i mean they're they're aghast they really are they're great people i won't even tell you the story about how i initially got to know him greg's father stopped me in my tracks i was like what, what, what? but it's another story <laughs> What did you just say? <laughs> so um, they're they're just they're just fun people. I mean, we had his fiftieth birthday party at Paradise Alley. Craig's father. I, well, he's just just great people, and and it reflects in their son. You know what I mean? And, and those are the people that you want in the business. Those are the people that you want in the business because they'll appreciate and respect it, and, and and you know instead of thinking they're entitled to it. They'll, you know, Greg's worked hard. He's he's worked hard. You know, you guys know I make I make cheesecakes for a hobby, and I've I've given a couple to his father, and I look at the kid and go, "Did you have any?" He'd go, oh, Mar, I can't. I, I you know start. He's rubbing his abs, going, and I can't. I can't do that. You know what I mean? So he takes it very seriously. So, um, the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy, my brother, um who uh, I love like my own brother. Uh, hopefully he's feeling better. Big daddy. I hope you're, you're, you're starting to come out of your uh, aches and pains. You know, that's another, that's another guy who is, is spent, you know, from his, the time of his, uh, the time of his interest in, in pro wrestling is 40 years. And he was one of those uh, few managers kind of like Lou Albano um, that took a lot of bumps he big daddy took a lot of bumps in his career man a lot a lot a lot outside the ring on a concrete floor in the ring over the ropes so you know a couple times a year he'll become almost incapacitated incapacitated so i hope he's i hope you're coming out of that um you can tell when big daddy's not 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 uh not well because i called him a few times and it went right to his voicemail so that means mancini i love you don't want to talk to anybody. Very private guy. The most private guy you'll ever meet is is Big Daddy. Um, so hopefully he's 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 uh, feeling better and um, and um, his heart his his heart gets comforted. But um, but we we won't we won't. Get, I would never dare get into that. But I'll just say that. Um, so January twentieth is. Um, New Year's resolution for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. Um, bell time seven o'clock. Also, I want to uh, I want to mention in case you guys haven't noticed that you know I'm not going to mention the guy's name. Um, there's this huge 400 pound guy on TikTok who like gets a hundred dollars worth of McDonald's and he eats it and. Uh, a hundred dollars worth of Kentucky fried chicken. And he just, he started out at like 150 pounds in 2016. He's like 400 pounds now. I just sh kind of shrugged my shoulders at it. I was going through YouTube because every now and then somebody will post a new match of mine. And I'm really looking for the match where I wrestled big John stud in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. Um, the night where, I looked up at the board and I saw Stud Mancini and I went up to John and I said, John, it's us. And he said, oh, thank God. I go, what's the matter? He goes, man, I can't move. My back is killing me. He goes, it's killing me, killing me. He goes, when I get you up for that backbreaker, you're going to have to get up yourself. And I know you can do that. I said, yeah, I can. I will. No problem. And um, he goes, you know, for that, you're going to get me up the farthest. And I went, what? He goes, for that, you're going to get me up the farthest. You know, it was the $15,000 body slam challenge, you know, prior to WrestleMania 1. WrestleMania 1. Mm. <laughs> so,
So uh, he came charging in that buckle and he hit the buckle and he turned around and I got him. I got him like that. And the whole place went, whoa. And then I dropped him like he was too heavy for me to hold. I started selling my lower back. Um, so I'm, I'm really... I'm really waiting to see that on YouTube someday because it was one of my it was one of my favorite matches, uh, one of my favorite jobs that I ever did. But as I was scrolling through YouTube, they had a little documentary on this guy that ate all this food, who's four hundred pounds now, and he lives in a two point four million dollar house. Yeah, a two point four million dollar house. Now, I can't do what he does because I have type two diabetes, and that would kill me. I would just put me in a grave. I can't do that. So I was driving in a car one day and I go, damn, I gotta do something. I've got to do something. What can I do? I gotta do something. So a song came on the radio and I hit the record and I sang the song. So now I'm looking at the song's done and I'm looking at the screen going, What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Hi Herb. I go, what am I gonna do? So I decided to create the singing wrestler. And I put, I, I put that on TikTok, and amazingly, to my surprise, not one person, not one person has said, "You suck yet." And of course, Maurice, you know the the offer I received for going on to do that. So I got I got an offer to go on. Don't forget the lyrics, um, which Don't I hope to do. Uh, yeah, which I hope to do in Los Angeles or New York, but. I guess I'm trying to say that that has relieved a lot of my stress. I've really enjoyed doing that. Um, and it's relieved a lot of, a lot of my stress. I, I would, I, I have the same problems Big Daddy has. I, I, I would love, and, and I, I was in 2000, 2000, 2021, I was going, going every day. I, I started getting into a groove. But the more I think, I would love to go back to the gym. I really would. I, re I would love to go back to the gym. I'd love to take off 40 pounds. I'd love to start pumping the weights. But I know my body is just going to scream at me. And I'm closer to 60 than I am to 50. You know what I mean? So, um, I mean, I watch what I eat the, the best I can. Unless I'm pissed, then I don't care what I eat. So, I, I'm i an emotional eater. So, um, uh we, you know, this this singing really uh kind of kind of gets the stress out. But um, Jack, I I we we need to get together on this, and I'm excited. I'm excited for this show because I have I have females in the hopper as students. They're not ready yet, but boy, when they're ready, they'll make it. They'll make an impression. You know, I have I have Rachel Ray, I have Jada, uh, who's an, a tremendous athlete. You know, I I have um, I have I have a wrestler that's come over that's already a pro that's come over from another organization. Um, Nicole Metalla, she's a, a she works. You know, she is Indian, uh, American Indian. So, um, I'm I'm excited for for the talent to go over there. I mean, to get a guy like, like uh, Marbury, I don't know if you ever saw Marbury work. Mar Mar Marbury comes out with a, a mascot. He comes out with a basketball, you know, and he comes out in a basketball, but the kid could bring it. Like, here's an example. When holiday was rehabbing, of course he came home. He said, Mario, you know, when he, when the cancer was in remission, he goes, I need to get back. And you know what? I met him immediately, and I gave him the key to the kingdom. I said, here's a key. That's your home. Here's a key. We're talking about the first student that ever went to Paradise Alley. The first one is, is Richard Holiday. He's the first guy to ever enter, enter the ring at school. So I gave him a key, and I said, you know, rock on. And, of course, he called Baylor. He's not stupid. He called people that can only hang with him. And, he, you know, he called Baylor and he said, great, meet me at the school, work out with me, you know, and because he knew he knew that he Baylor can bring it. And then he 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 also worked out with Marbury, you know, and, he, and I watched 
he and Marbury yeah. work work out, and Marbury wasn't he wasn't missing anything. You know, he he wasn't skipping a beat at all. So uh, he he's a very impressive worker, very impressive. You know, I I'd like to the in the future I'd like to bring Sunset Steve Garcia down there. He's another one. You know, high flyer. You know, very entertaining guy. Um, there there's a lot of guys um, in 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 the hopper there that that could really that that could benefit from going down there. But you know what it is, Jack. It's it's what I want them to, to have is hitting the road. <laughs> you know that that's why Roma and I would bring a group of guys to Costello, the Brian Costello in Indiana. That's not five hours. Canada's five hours. Costello was fourteen, but um, they experienced going on the road. You know, mm-hmm. you know, Roma could have easily flew in. I could have easily flew. Roma said, no, get in the car, feel this, you know, feel this. So it's going on the road and, and the camaraderie and, and, and knowing you're going for a, a purpose that's in your heart and you want to do this. And, and, and it, listen, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. In the middle of my career, I used to tell people that it was true too. Sick, sick. They used to tell people the wrestling got in the way. <laughs> it got the wrestling got in the way. I, I there came a time, especially TV taping, because everybody's there. So you go to a house show, you might have some favorite people there, some people you're not that close to, some people you're okay with. But it, house shows are really fun when you're with people you're really, really close to. So TV, everybody's there, so it doesn't matter. And I can remember Strongbow screaming for me because, you know, I if there were if I was third up and the match was in, that means there's a match before me and then I'm up. So they they want you at the gorilla position ready to go, you know, make sure you're there. And he's screaming me and seeing me and seeing him. Maybe Billy Jack Haynes was there, or Junkyard Dog was there making us me and SD and, and, and making us laugh our ass off. And then I'd hear my name. And it's from where we go, would you get your ass upstairs? And I'd look at him and go, God, I'll be right back, man. Don't don't tell the rest of the story until I get back. <laughs> so I'd go out there, I'd do my thing, and I'd run back to my chair, man, and sit down and all right, I'm done. I look, you know. So um so it, it's that kind of time you have where where you remember the match. But you remember the dressing room. You remember the new friends that you met. You remember, you know, the the family that you went with and, you know, where you went after the show and who ribbed you in the hotel room or, you know, it's like, you know, when I first went on the road, when I first roomed with Roma, it, it, you know, in 84, uh, early 85, we'd room together and. You know, of course, you know, people are human beings. They got to they gotta go to the bathroom. Well, Roman didn't think I was a human being. He'd get, I'd come out of the bathroom. He'd come up to me. Now, we're talking about a 25, 26-year-old Roma. This is not the Roma of today. <laughs> it was a different Roma back then. So he'd come up to me and he'd go, somebody died in your intestine. You're not human. What is that? What is that? Somebody died in your intestines. What the hell are you eating? Are we pissed? pissed? I mean, mad. Mad when I came out of that. So when we take the guys on the road, we especially in Indiana, Rome would go, you ready? I go, yeah, I'm ready. And then he'd call the, he'd call the guys up from the school and go, listen, it's really important. We talk to you about the dressing room you know, at Brian Costello's show, you know, in a few hours. So, uh, you know, w- we're going to come down to your room and talk to you about, you know, the setup and everything there that he has and the way he runs things. It's important that you know that. And they're like, oh, okay, okay. So we go down there, we knock on the door. Roma's the first one that walks in. And then when Roma walks in, I slide into the bathroom. <laughs> and then I come out, Roma goes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> run out of there and the guys go ah you son of a bitch you son of a bitch that's just a high protein diet though I can respect that Mario uh, it's, it's you stuff know, like you know, that you remember 
you know who else is going to be on that show? I, I seen you on his show last week, or was it the week before? Uh, Rene Dupree. You nice were on kid. Cafe de Rene. I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, nice kid, man. I, listen, it's no secret. You may be fighting him. Who knows? No. no. I, I'm going to be in like a six-man or eight-man tag team. I, I Not one-on-one, Maurice. You're, you're wrong. So, so I'm going to say it live. So, like, Scott Wilder, you know, if somebody called me for a show, I'd be like, mm, you know, because that it's a point where I got so close to him that just going with him to laugh, I don't care if I make any money. I just want to go there with him and laugh. You know what I mean? That's what we do. But Maurice is the kind of, he's, if Maurice says, he's like the podcast, my podcast godfather, if he goes, listen, don't do that podcast. I won't do it. If he says, Mario, do this podcast, I go, okay. No, it, it'd be really to your benefit. It's a good guy. Do this podcast. They go, all right. Or I'll go, listen, don't do it. And I'll go, okay. So I don't, I just listen to Maurice. So when he told me to do that podcast, I went, okay. And um, really nice. Really nice guy, you know. Really nice guy. It was a, it was a pleasure to do it with him, you know. Except, um, except for the last show in Renfrew, Ontario, when he clearly broke the rules and physically <laughs> assaulted me with a briefcase and concussed me. I haven't forgotten about that, Renee. And you know the big money players have stuff always cooking, so look out. That's that's. Uh, but apart from that, he's fine. That's another he's issue. Fine. That's another that's that's that sounds like a pretty big issue there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. It is that's it a is problem. a big problem. I I want to just oops, I just want to throw up here uh Bob the Cooker Cook, great individual. He says he always wanted to be a pro wrestler but unfortunately it didn't work out too well. The ever self-deprecating Bob Cook. Bob, where do you live? I love guys like you. Where do you where do you live? I think he lives in Florida, doesn't he? Thereabouts. All right, that's kind of far. But listen, I got I got another brother of mine. His his name is Kevin Saban. So, um, Ke- I'm not Kev. I'm not going to tell the whole story. <laughs> going to tell the whole story. So, um, Kevin's a big guy, not a tiny guy. And he was in the co- in, the, in the Coliseum in the 80s. He knew uh, one of the guys that were would walk the wrestlers out. And, um, you know, he had run into Vince, and he met Vince, and Vince said, wow, you, you know, you should consider, you know, being a wrestler. And, and, and Kevin, um, Kevin had just turned 60 um, this year. So, you know, guys like cook and guys like kevin who say gee i should have you know i i always find a story for them to get in a ring and do a little something whether it's you know somebody goes to throw him a tackle and the other guy takes the bump or throw clothesline the wrestler you know gets mad hits the ropes goes and he just clotheslines the guy just just for once in their life just once the to hear the crowd pop for them and have them get the feeling of being in the ring in that experience just a 30 second spot you know so i i always have have empathy for people that go you know i wanted to be a wrestler but it just never worked out and i go well listen let's do a spot i'm gonna let you live that i'm gonna ha- i at least want you to have the feeling during your lifetime let's work a spot and and I have them get in and, and and work a spot, and it's something for them to remember. You know what I mean? Um, he lives in Crystal River, Florida. Yeah, that's a little far, but as as I I tell the you know people who like I get offended. So does Roma. Roma goes hammer him. I go, oh, well, you know, a guy called me. He's like, uh, listen. My friend's getting married, and he always wanted to be a pro wrestler, and uh, we're doing his bachelor party. I'm like, yeah. He's like, you know, we want to take him to your school for an hour and get him in the ring, uh, you know, as part of the bachelor party and have him mess around and stuff. He always wanted to be a wrestler. I'm like, yeah, two grand. 
Yeah, but, but you make it a mockery. You make it a mockery of something I take very seriously. It's like this isn't a sandbox. It's not a swing set. You know what I mean? Do what everybody else does. Go to a strip bar. You know what I mean? For for a bachelor party. Do what everybody else does. You don't don't call me and make a mockery of my business. You know what I mean? Everybody sacrificed so much to 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 be a pro wrestler and 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 try to live their dream or did live their dream. In my case, they tried. <laughs> they tried. Um, or what or what Eddie Graham and Bob Roop did to those type of people. Stretch them. Stretch them hard, you know what I mean? But these days, Jack, you know what? You do that, you end up in court. Listen, I, 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 a class I had this week, um, you know, they were, Sunset Steve went and worked out with the Gotch family, I guess, in, in Maryland. And they really ran a rigorous, I guess there, there's a deck of cards and you pull an ace and those are, 20 burpees or you pull the diamonds and those are 25 sit-ups or whatever. And they, they, they put them through some rough stuff and, and Steve's in pretty good shape. So I, I, I don't worry about him ever petering out like that, but um, you know, the other students heard it and everything. And I go, well, I could teach you like I used to teach back in the late eighties, early nineties, if you want to go through that. And they went, yeah, okay. They couldn't get off the canvas. They could not get off the canvas. And I that was that was me standing outside the ring. So you know, to go in and stretch somebody these days, you know, it's just so we live in strange times. You know what I mean? Where 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 I have a picture of me when I was 17 with half a layer of skin off my face. Because before the wrestling school opened, I went to the New Haven Coliseum in the, a couple of times. And you know, I, I got a layer of skin off the side of my face, ring rash, just just grinding my face into the canvas, just grinding it, grinding it, grinding it. You know, they beat the hell out of you. It's like the August 9th, 84, when I wrestled Schultz and he broke my nose in two places. Uh, you know, who knows if, you know, somebody gets in a wrestling match to these days and, and the person gets their nose broken, they, you know, they might get sued and, and they'll win. The win because you know, as they taught in law school in, in torts class, which means a wrongful act, which is basically the law that's fo that's followed for were you injured in a car accident? So, um, you know, it's like outside, listen to the legal language <laughs> outside what's usual and customary for the sport. So, what they mean is, you know, if you're playing pro football. And the guys, the running backs run in, and he goes to get. Oh, the Undertaker got him. And now his audio is gone. Rest Your... in peace. <laughs> the audio is the audio is gone again. Oh, well. He's, he's this a is man regular, in demand. Yes. It's, it's a regular staple of the show now at this point. It's actually a uh, a planned spot for, for every Mario Mancini show. And right. this is the ad break. This is the ad break where we can say next week, Jacques Rougeau. Next, next is it the fifteenth Monday? The fifteenth, Jacques Rougeau will be on this broadcast at three p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But Maurice, that's just one of many big guests coming up on the program. And here's Mario back. Well, well, that's what happens when somebody tries to call me. So it's like, a, like the running backs running with the ball. And the guy that's going to tackle him goes to tackle him and gives him a forearm and, and breaks his jaw. That's outside the scope of what's usual and customary. And they can get sued for that or get arrested for assault. So these days, stretching, you know what? It, and, unless you're Jody Malenko, I don't think Jody cares. <laughs> I think Jody will stretch anyway. <laughs> There's got to be Jody. a happy medium, though, like, like you said. I mean... That that may, maybe folks that are uh, you know uninitiated to the business they're not fully aware of just how insulting uh, that that would be. Let let me come in and and play in there. Well, it's not for for those in the business. It's not a it's not a playpen. It's a place of work and should be afforded that respect. So unfortunately, you know, 
you can't have Doc and uh, Watts beating the hell out of people anymore. But but there there's got to be a like you said a, a middle ground where you can say, hey, this this is serious. This is my life's work. This is my life's love. Let let's show a little respect. Yeah, absolutely. And and thank God, thank God that the people that have walked through the door of Paradise Alley. I mean, they're very serious about it. They want it. Some some want it as a serious career, and they want to they want to go for the gold. They want to make it to the promised land. Believe it or not, there's others that that come in and go. Listen, I'd be happy booked every weekend doing independent shows. I'd be happy doing that. Maybe three three days a week. I that, I'd be thrilled. You know what I mean? And and there's nothing wrong with that at all. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, it, it, independent pro wrestling is is a hot thing today. You know what I mean? It's it's a fantastic route to go. It's it's no longer considered like a, a you know a schleppy minor league thing. It's 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 really hot, and these people draw some pretty big crowds, which I, I would love to draw pretty big crowds. <laughs> oh, well, God. it's it's interesting that you know post two thousand with uh, Ring of Honor and that that golden age of independent wrestling that so many major stars came came out of the indies today and are making very viable uh careers in in the major organizations and, and as you know that that wasn't always that way right no it wasn't no it wasn't always that way at all no nope my cardona prime example cooker saying joe malenko is one of the best ever and a legit badass every school should do a seminar with joe I agree a thousand percent. You know, again, I've mentioned it before. When you we talk about the Gotch family or the Malenko family or the Hart family or, you know, the Samoan dynasty, it's all wrestling royalty. It's all wrestling royalty. I mean, they're, they're giants, just giants in the business. Giants. So... You know, a, a lot of respect, a lot of respect to them. You know, and it looked Barry Horowitz came out of Malenko's school. Um, you know, Broadway Joe came out of, uh, he was with the WCW. He came out of Malenko's school. Um, so, you know, they, they, they obviously put out great talent. You know what I mean? So uh, th these are these are this is wrestling royalty and i think it's it's really exciting that there's the opportunity that uh you know your your vision and mr roma's vision of of the importance of the experience of going on the road and working you know new uh territories or, or new areas such as such as canada up here with great north wrestling that'll be something that you know a lot of a lot of folks sometimes don't get and can only improve their uh, appreciation for for the business when they when they go on and, and do other things. Jack, that Great North Wrestling is huge to 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 these to these kids. Be, think about it. I mean, yeah, we run a show once a month. That that's great. And you know, companies and oh, Slick Wagner Brown, great kid. I'll run a show or, or, you know, between Connecticut and Massachusetts. And, but for these kids to be, to be a staple, if, if you wish them to be a, a staple in your organization to say, Hey, once a month or once every other month, I'm going to Canada. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you, you get a hold of me or Roman and go, Hey, you got anybody else that can really bring it? And well, he'll say, yeah, I'll send Marbury up to you. And, um, you know, it, they don't even have to go through the expense of bringing somebody with them. I mean, if you had somebody there that would just fit into the basketball, uh, the basketball uh, costume there, <laughs> um, you know, when Marbury comes out, it, it, you know, I mean, the, the kid is just really good. He's just, he's just really good. Baylor, Baylor's above and beyond. Um so Sunset Steve's good. You know, we, we got, you know, um, our, our, our world champion, Hunter Tarka, he's another one, but he's moving soon. Um, he's another one. 
you know, a real interesting guy we have that's a veteran is is Bloodsaw. I mean, if if anyone, I I we've had Bloodsaw on a show where the first three matches they were they were good, they were okay, but when he comes out, he he just never ignores, never ignores, um, never ignores the crowd ever, ever. He gets the crowd into it like like crazy he, you know he's a really really good entertainer um so we you know we have a lot of we had a we have a we have a good stable we have a good stable of guys that could really really bring some some entertainment to great north so it, it, it's it you know it's a huge opportunity it really is a huge opportunity for these kids to to be able to say that i'm going there you know to work that's it's a tremendous opportunity well, the future definitely looks bright on on that front. And it, it, as as I always say, no matter where you are, support independent wrestling. And that includes the very hot scene over in Ireland. Correct, Maurice? Absolutely. I, I sent you over some stuff. Actually, Mario, I can give you um, some login details if you want to watch a few things for over here as well, if you have the time. Okay. Got a good on-demand service, so I can send so it over to you. <clears throat> Does anybody have any scuttlebutt about Dwayne? Is he just ducking in for a, a minute, or is he he going to stay? The Rock for the Rock. Oh, he be he come in for the full WrestleMania program now. I think well, not full, but I'd imagine there'll be five or six dates in the lead up to WrestleMania. Yeah, but it looks like from judging by what he was saying, I think it was today on social media that he's he's here for one more run anyway. Yeah, oh, uh, you always go home. No matter yep. how many movies you do, what do you do? You go back to your first love, and you go home. I'm you all know. for it, personally. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a great he's guy. The big, biggest superstar in the world, really. Isn't yeah, he? he's yeah, he's a great he's a great guy too. So, um, but what about Cody's story? Ah, uh, fuck Cody. I'm not familiar with it. He's he's, go, he's, go, he's Goldust's brother, Mario. Yeah, I know. His it's destiny to to achieve the the WWE Heavyweight Championship, the belt that escaped the legendary Dusty Rhodes, and and he came back from that other organization to finish that story. And a lot of fans felt they should have pulled the trigger with Reigns' last uh, go round, but. Now the, the, the money before The Rock came on the scene again was that he was going to main event against Roman and, and finally bring that title back to the Rhodes family. Now, who knows? I think there's a reason why it's been, what, two and a half years nearly since he came back. And they still haven't put the belt on him. Wow. He left AEW that long ago? Yes. Wow. How's AEW doing? Um, well, that's... Um, I, it, I guess it depends on what metric you look at. Uh, live attendance is suffering. It's quite down. The ratings are down. But uh, Mr. Khan is providing a, an endless source of entertainment via his uh, social media posts, notably on X, engaging in... Yeah, all sort of uh, of interactions with folks. Most recently, uh, a man whose opinions on the business I really respect, uh, and that being the Disco Inferno, who he referred to, I guess, a couple of weeks ago now as a as a parasite and and a never relevant uh, force in the business, which which I would disagree with, due to the fact that he was pulling ratings on WCW during the hottest period in the business and was a former TV champion. I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that, but th this is this is the thing. I mean, am I crazy? Am I nuts? I mean, why why doesn't he just take Holiday and Hammerstone and write that storyline with MJF like they were in MLW? That threesome. I mean, even. 
you know, what they, they were over big. They were they were over big. You know, I I don't understand why that they, that they don't give birth to that again. I mean, even Jim Cornette on his show had mentioned the di- what were they the dynasty? Um, geez, I forgot what they were called. Um, but all three of them, Jim said, worked in what chemistry with those three guys, and the and the storylines. I mean, I don't know why they they wouldn't do that. I mean, I I don't know. Call me nuts. I don't call me crazy. I have no idea. I mean, they can call them something else for God's sakes. But for for Hammerstone and Holiday not to be there with MJF. I mean, th- I, there's a there's a huge history there. Yeah, with the amount of guys and experience that they have signed, guys like Sting, guys like Taz. This week they signed Scott Garland, <laughs> Scotty. Scotty. They have all these very very experienced guys in different phases of the business, but the problem is at the top, and I think that that just Tony Khan is making all these decisions, and I don't know why he's hired so many guys because. There's no way people can be making these decisions that he's making. And I'm not even talking about the tweeting and the stuff with Jinder Mulhall this week was way out of line as well, in my opinion. But he's got loads of wrestling people around him, but I don't think he's using them. You know, Roma Roma left him a voicemail. He left him a voicemail saying, listen, I'd like to help you with your company and your storylines. You know, because Roma's got great storylines and he never got back to him. I mean, you know, these guys should be back there doing storylines. I I mean, you gotta let it go. I mean, I have no right to, I'm not judging anybody. I'm going to, I'm going to use myself. Yes. I'm going to great North wrestling. Yes. I'm going to lace my boots, put my knee pads on, and I'm going to walk out there and I'm going to work after somebody stretches my hamstrings until the, the point of me screaming um, to, to loosen up all my calcium deposits and everything. That's an isolated thing. That's a one-shot deal. I, 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 I can't go in there and work you know, a, like I like I did when I was 23, you know what I mean? It's like at one point, your body does say your head wants it, your heart wants it, but your body goes, man, not, not doing that. You know what I mean? So I don't, and, and these guys are are, are, are big stars. I, I have no right, you know what I mean? They, they, went, they went a lot farther than me, but, you know, what, what Sting want to do, have a heart attack in the ring? You know what I mean? Having, I think he's having his last match in May, is it, Jack? Yes, yes. Well, in a, well, I believe a six man. Well, yeah. Come on, man. Because he listen, he can't. The only way you're going to build a company is with brand new talent, storylines, great promos. You know what I mean? And great, great storylines. I mean, it's not. It, March. It's it's March. not. Yeah, it's not that hard. It's it's not it's not that hard. It's it's as easy as well, I want to start a storyline with uh Piper and Snooko. What do you want to do? Well, have them do a Piper's pit. Well, what do you want to do during the Piper's pit? Huh? I don't know he comes from an island, I don't know. We hit him in the head with a coconut. That started holy hell. You know what I mean? That started holy hell. So, it, you know, or or or, or you, you take something simple like uh, Terry Daniels. You know, Sergeant Slaughter is a great big star, and all of a sudden he brings in, uh, you know, Terry Daniels as one of his cadets or whatever. And then, and then, you know, there's all kinds of ideas with young talent that are coming up. I mean, look, the names are the names. There's no, there's no doubt. Great North Wrestling books Hulk Hogan. The come out, tear his t-shirt, bang some poses, go like this, this, and this. But the place, the place is going to be sold out. Just on who he is, he doesn't have to lock up with anybody. 
You know, and these guys should be at that phase where Tony Khan can have them present at a show. Doesn't mean they have to lock up anybody. People come see them just because they're going to be there. You know, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean they have to lock up. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's just me. Call me crazy. I, I think the part for me that's hard to understand as, uh, you know, a promoter myself and, and do the booking for our shows is is the fact that Tony Scott or had Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, Malenko, Jerry Lynn, uh, on and on, and I'm forgetting Snake Roberts, you know, one of the greatest minds for the business that ever was. And he insists on on doing the creative for all the shows without from from what people say experts that know backstage sources or whatever and and isn't utilizing them i can say from my experience i am i am much much more open and and um, thankful for collaboration on shows because i i don't know everything i certainly don't have a mind on a caliber of some of the vets that i've had the pleasure of having in my locker room so it, it it's it's a balance the other strange part about AEW is He's very rigid in that respect, yet doesn't appear to be the final word or the boss at the end of the day. So it's quite an interesting um, case of psychology there. And let's not forget, he fired his biggest star and he went straight back into WWE. He fired him? Yes. Wow. CM Punk. Wow. Wow. <laughs> There we go. Wow. So it's it's I'm not one of these folks, and I know I know Maurice isn't either that that rejoices in you know the the uh troubles of AEW or predicting its demise or or willing its demise because guys and gals need a place to work and it's a tremendous opportunity, but there there are major major problems there and i guess it will depend on when um mr khan senior decides to cut off the funding or uh their television situation becomes less lucrative than it is now it's 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 troubling all the way around it, it would be nice to have a bona fide second not competitor but a, a stable place for for people to work and, and make a living and feed their families yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But you have to have an open mind. And it, 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 listen, it's it's the same thing I say about the WWE um, and the business today. And I'm always very open about it. You know, back, back in my day, <laughs> back in my day, you had around the table, a round of a, a production meeting, you had Howard Finkel, Vince McMahon, Pat Patterson, Chief J. Strongbow, Gorilla Monsoon. You had Terry Garvin. You had all these wrestler wrestling minds doing the storylines and you know, doing the production, doing a, a year planning of storylines and who's going to do what and how they're going to do it. You know what I mean? It's And then to bring in Hollywood people that don't know the difference between a, a hammer lock and a padlock or why you would put some someone in, in one, to me, it, listen... Much respect to Tony Khan. I wish he would take my whole wrestling school, especially Holiday. I, I, you know, much respect to him and his company. But if he wants to be successful, he has to put it in the hands of the people have the minds for wrestling. You know, guys like Jake Roberts, and you know, you you, you have to you have to you know it, it, call it. I'd call guys in like Jake Roberts and Wayne Ferris and Bill Eady, you know, uh, especially Bill Eady, you know, and say, you know, hey, this thing's not working, you know, what can you do for me? And then, you know, I put it together, 
you know, have these great minds say, well, this is, well, you got to do it this way and that way and do it that way. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it, you, you know, I, I can't, listen, New Haven, Connecticut is the pizza capital of the world, not just the United States. It's the pizza capital of the world. If you Google New Haven pizza, it will say New Haven pizza is the pizza capital of the world. That's pretty big. So if you go into Sally's or Peppy's, who has the same oven in there than they did in 1924, and you go behind the counter and go, yeah, I'm going make a pizza. Jake, that pizza's not going to come out like the guy who's been doing that for 30 years. He's going to go, you, you don't make it like that it's kind of that simple you know what i mean it's kind of that simple so i don't I, I just i just can't here's the problem and i'll say it for the millionth time i broke into the wrestling business the wrestling business i i didn't break into the entertainment business today it's the entertainment business so everybody thinks it's entertainment and they forget about the wrestling. It's the wrestling and what you do with it that sells those tickets. And by extension, also not the television business, which uh, seems to uh, be the major driving factor. But gentlemen, we have blown through another hour of the very popular Mario Mancini show, Dry January edition. We've got so much more left on the table to talk about, but we will we will put that over until next time. So many big happenings in the world of professional wrestling, but most notably, as discussed and broke here exclusively, the return of Mario Mancini to a wrestling ring. I'm going to go to each of you for your final thoughts. Go well, ahead, try Mario. Tell him, try, try telling Maurice in March. It's a dry month. I dare you. <laughs> you know what, yeah. <laughs> Every day is St. Patrick's Day. Every day is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, well, until we meet again next month, uh, hopefully I'll have something um, more interesting to talk about i've just my my mind and my emotions um i want my cut <laughs> you should you should try you should start making for your tiktok mario training training videos for getting back in the ring that'd be good that's training an excellent video. idea training videos yeah me me in there. oh i'll do that i'll do that yeah I'll, while I'll, singing I'll, while singing while at singing. the same time I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that and, and then plug the show at the same time and say I'm getting ready for June 29th. So um, just get on the treadmill and just start singing. Yeah, that, that's that's it. So I just pass out right on the treadmill. Let the, let the belt just shoot me across the room. Can you My do Bohemian just, Rhapsody on the treadmill, maybe? I, I Well, you know what? I did Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, the singing wrestler did Bohemian Rhapsody. The thing about it I can't understand is I said it for 60 seconds, so it's not the whole song because I tried a whole song once and TikTok kicked me out. So I said, all right, let me try 60 seconds, and that's been working. So it's really not the whole song. It's part of it. But, um, yeah, the singing wrestler is, is uh, I don't know. I, I have fun with it. What can I tell you? But Brian, Adams, Brian, Adams, Brian Adams run to you on the treadmill. There's one. There's one. There you go. Well, fans, that is it for this momentous historical edition of the Mario Mancini Show. I am going to sign off on behalf of Mario and, of course, Maurice, the man from Cheap Heat Productions. Want everyone, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, get the notification so you don't miss any of the tremendous content we have coming up in January, but also in February and on and on, and be sure to watch for the next Mario Mancini show. Until that uh, event, I will say good night and farewell, everyone.